Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and here's how I created the panoramas for the body of work titled Colors of Place. First, in Lightroom Classic, I selected 50 images which I thought best represented the colors that I found in that location, and I placed them into a collection. So here I have 50 images selected. I'll click on the plus icon in order to create a collection. I'll call it Alaska, and I'll include the selected photos, and I'll also put it inside a collection set called Color of Place. I'll click Create, and we can see that new collection. Now before I start editing any of these images, I'm going to want to be sure that underneath the preferences for external editing, I have the bit depth set to 16 bit. And that's because I know that I'm going to blur these images and I want to make sure that I have the maximum amount of data to work with because there are going to be some areas that only have slight color changes over long distances and I want to try to avoid any banding. All right, then I'll select the first image, choose Photo, Edit In, and edit this in Photoshop. I'll choose Filter, and then Blur Gallery, and Path Blur. But I don't want the blur to be horizontal, I want it to be vertical, so I'll click on the white dot, and then just drag upwards. I'll increase the speed to the maximum of 500%, and click OK. Then to apply the filter with the same settings, I'll choose Filter, and Blur Gallery. In order to crop the image, I'll select the Crop tool, and I've got very specific options set for width, height, and resolution. In this case, 300 pixels wide, 6,000 pixels high by 300 pixels per inch, and I want to be sure to delete the cropped pixels. I'll click inside of the Crop Marquee, and then click and drag in order to reposition the crop over an area in the image that I want to use. I can tap the Return key or just click outside of the Crop marquee in order to apply that crop. Now because I'm starting with RAW files, if I save this image, it's going to save it as either a PSD or a TIFF file, whatever my preference is set to in Lightroom. So I can quickly choose File, Save, and then File, Close without having to worry about saving over the original. All right, let's return to Lightroom Classic. We can see that that new document has automatically been imported into Lightroom Classic, and it's also inside the collection. Now to save time, I've already blurred and cropped all of the rest of the images, and I actually have them already here in this collection. So when I was finished and I just had all of these little pieces that I wanted to stitch together to make the panorama, I wanted to pre-visualize how they would look. Well, in order to do that, I would select all using Command A on the Mac or Control A on Windows. And then while I'm in the collection, I'll go into Survey View. I can do that by clicking on the icon here or just tap the N key. And now I get to preview what they're going to look like. And because they're in a collection, they can have their own custom sort order. So it's very easy for me to click and drag in order to rearrange these individual strips. So I would do this until I got the individual strips in the order that I liked them, and then I would return to Grid View. But I can't just drag and drop the images into Photoshop because they wouldn't obey this custom sort order. So instead, I'll click to Export. I'm going to export these just to the desktop into a subfolder, but what I need to make sure that I do is rename them. So I'll come in here and choose Edit, and if there's a bunch of stuff in there, just delete it out. And what you need is you need to add a sequence to the beginning of the renamed documents. So in this case, I'll add a two-digit sequence and insert that. And then I'm okay with just leaving the file name as it was. All right, I'll click Done. Again, I'm working in 16-bit. And I'll export these 50 images. Now, let's return to Photoshop where we can choose File, New, and create a new document. I want it to be 52 by 20 inches at 300 pixels per inch, again in 16-bit. Then I'll create a new guide layout, making sure that I have 50 columns and a margin on all sides of 1 inch. Then before I drag and drop each individual document into this single panorama as layers, 
I'll choose the Preferences, General, because I want to enable the Skip Transform when placing, because that will speed up the placing of images, and I won't have to tap the Enter key to apply each one of the transformations. And I'm going to disable the ability to create smart objects because all of my individual documents are at the correct size and I'm not going to transform them. So I wouldn't really get any benefits of having them be smart objects and it would make my document much larger. All right, let's find that folder full of images right here, crop reordered. I'll select all of the images and just drag and drop them into that open Photoshop document. Now in order to distribute them, I'll tap the V key to select the Move tool, and the top layer is already selected, so I'll just click and drag that over to the right-hand side, making sure that I leave that one-inch margin. Then I'll scroll down on the Layers panel and select that first layer, and then just drag to reposition it all the way to the left-hand side. Now I'll hold down the Shift key, scroll up to the top, and click on the topmost layer in order to select all of the layers, and then click on the three dot icon in order to distribute them based on their vertical centers. Now I found that some of the panoramas actually looked better with one more application of the path blur, and this is one of those panoramas. So while I could flatten the image right now, I actually want to leave the individual layers in case I want to reposition some of the individual panels in the panorama at a later time. So I'm just gonna create a new blank layer at the top of the layer stack, then I'll hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows and choose Layer Merge Visible, which will give me a flattened version of all of the layers that were visible on this blank layer. That's gonna make it much easier for me to then choose Filter and apply the Blur Gallery again. All right, in order to add the border, I'll click on the New Layer icon and we can rename that to Border. Then I'll switch to the Marquee tool by tapping the M key, and I'll use the guides in order to make a selection of the interior area of the panorama. I'll choose Select, and then Inverse, Edit, and Fill, selecting white as my foreground color. Then I'll choose Select, Deselect, and View, and then Clear Guides. So there you go. That's how I created the panoramas for the body of work titled Colors of Place. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.